In 2001, Apple introduced the first iPod. Five years later, 2006, a revolutionary headphone company, Beats, was founded. Then, in 2014, Apple bought Beats for over $3 billion. And along the way, Carlisle made some money as well. In this video, we will talk about the $3 billion Carlisle Beats and Apple deal from three different perspectives. The Beats perspective, the Apple perspective, and the Carlisle perspective. And then we'll wrap up our video with a final thought. So let's get started with the Beats perspective. In 2006, Jimmy Iovine, best known as the co-founder of Interscope Records, and Dr. Dre, the famous raptor and record producer, decided to join up to create a unique headphone company called Beats, also referred to as Beats Electronics and Beats by Dr. Dre. In 2008, Beats launched the company's first set of headphones, Headphones that were colorful and were marketed differently than any other headphones had been marketed in the past. Athletes and celebrities such as LeBron James and Justin Bieber were seen wearing the headphones on a regular basis. Because of the unique branding, Beats was able to charge a premium price for the headphones, even though they didn't cost that much to make. Which of course, as you know from our previous videos, results in a high margin. In addition to selling headphones at a high margin, Beats was able to get into the music streaming business. In 2012, Beats bought the music streaming service MOG, and in 2014, launched a streaming service under the Beats brand, Beats Music. Beats, with all of its divisions, was an attractive asset, and in 2014, Apple announced it would buy Beats for over $3 billion. Now, investors, a private equity lesson here is that when you are looking to create value in a company, you should see if there's an opportunity to leverage unique marketing tactics to create a premium brand. A premium brand warrants a high price, results in high margins, and ultimately can create an immense amount of value. Now, before we continue, if you're enjoying this content and want to see more, please click the like and subscribe buttons. And please click a link in the description below to subscribe to our unique private equity video newsletter that provides exclusive analysis on recent private equity deals. Now let's move on to the Apple perspective. Back in 2001, the iPod was introduced by Steve Jobs in one of his famous marketing presentations. He held the white small iPod in his hand and said, this amazing little device holds a thousand songs. And then as he put the device in his pocket, he said, and it goes right in my pocket. But here's the thing, the iPod that Steve Jobs put in his pocket did not have headphones attached. In fact, after the iPod was introduced, while it was a game changer in the music industry, it did not really change the headphone industry. Years after the introduction of the iPod, there was still an opportunity for a player to revolutionize the headphone industry. And that's exactly what Beats did. And along with Beats Music, Beats streaming service, the company became a prime acquisition target for Apple. In 2014, when Apple bought Beats for over $3 billion, Apple not only purchased the Beats headphones, streaming service, and unique brand, but Apple also purchased the talent and infrastructure needed to grow its own products and services in the music industry. After the Beats acquisition, Apple transitioned Beats Music into Apple Music and was able to leverage the knowledge and people acquired in the Beats acquisition to come out with its own headphone products including the wildly successful AirPods. Investors, a private equity lesson here is that when you buy a company, 
you should see if you can leverage a company's existing talent and infrastructure to develop products and services for your current business. While this example is from Apple's perspective, where Apple is a public company, this is also common in a private equity buy and build strategy. The strategy we spoke about in our video titled Value Creation in Private Equity. Now let's look at it from the Carlisle perspective. So Carlisle, one of the largest private equity firms in the world, came in in October 2013 and made a minority investment in Beats and less than one year later sold it to Apple. Carlisle was able to help Beats recruit chief operating and financial officers, utilize Carlisle's network to help accelerate Beats international growth, and prepare for a sale to Apple. Investors, a private equity lesson here is that when you buy a company, you should see if you can leverage your network to help with recruiting and future growth. Now, here's a final thought. In the Carlisle Beats Apple deal, we have a win-win-win deal. The founders of Beats brought their music experience to build a company and have a lucrative exit. Apple was able to use its existing business to leverage the talent and infrastructure built by Beats to create products and services, including AirPods. And Carlisle used its connections to help Beats grow internationally and sell to Apple. Investors, think of what you have to bring to the table. Is it industry experience, like the Beats founders? Is it the ability to leverage talent, like Apple? Is it connections, like Carlisle? Or is it something else? When you are buying a private company, you need to be more than a checkbook. If you want to attract great companies, you should be able to add value with your industry experience, your ability to leverage talent, and your connections. And if you can, you might not just create a win-win deal, but you might create a win-win-win deal, just like Carlisle, Beats, and Apple did. In this video, we talked about the $3 billion Carlisle, Beats, and Apple deal from three different perspectives the Beats perspective, the Apple perspective, and the Carlisle perspective. If there are other deals that you would like us to create a video on, please let us know in the comments below. Thanks for watching our video. If you enjoyed it, please click the like and subscribe buttons. And in the description below, you'll find links to our unique private equity newsletter that provides exclusive commentary on recent private equity deals, as well as our website and our LinkedIn page, where you can find more information on many private equity topics. Thanks, and we'll see you in our next video.